All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm totally pumped to be back here again doing this thing with you guys. And um, and before before we get going, I, Jason just popped in on the call, of course, and I hadn't seen him for a little bit. But um, I want us to all um, just um, say say a little prayer. Jason's got some family stuff that's been going on in the background, and uh, and I think when we have this as a family, I think it's really important that we remember him and and, and his mom and everybody that's around them, and and just really send out some positive vibes as she's recovering, and um, and just make sure we send that little message out to Jason. I mean, sometimes we look at him like the fearless leader, and and he doesn't need anything because he's got it all. But I think that's a that's a, that's a mistake to, for us to even think that sometimes. So I think as we venture through in our in our in our month this month, we'll just keep him in mind because again, Ray, Jason brings a lot of value to this to this whole organization, and he's he's always full of value. And I just want to make sure that you know, Jason, you got us in the background, and, and we're certainly praying for you, buddy. So um, now, with all that said, it's January, and. Um, and so today um, we're going to go back to talking about one of the six um, mental muscles that we call them, and there are intellectual faculties. So I'm going to do a little tiny recap. I mean, I know I keep recapping sometimes, and I can go on for a whole hour and just recap because I love this information so much. And the more I talk about it, the more I speed up and I get just just really into it. Um, and so what we're really dealing with here is the other side of the coin is, is what the, uh, the program is called. And it means the other side of life where we don't see when you're out just doing all the things that we got to do to live our lives and, and be with our families. And we, this is sort of like the background information, but it, it is really, um, in my view, uh, as, important, as, as, a, as important as everything else in your foundation. So when we look at our lives like foundation pieces, this is definitely one of the bigger ones. As, and it's understanding our own higher side of our personalities. And so, um, and understanding that we have so much power in this thing that we call our mind, right? And, um, and so that's where I wanna go back to today. So we talked about, we have our conscious mind, we have our subconscious mind. We put it in a little, a little stick man um, diagram and uh, it was uh, illustrated. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to we ultimately become what we think about and we think with our mind. So we want to make sure that we're, um, I hesitate sometimes to always use the word in control of our mind because we're really guys at the end of the day, we're not in control of anything. But, uh, but, but we'll use it in that context about, well, we can control what it is that we think about. We ultimately become what we think about. And so we want to understand that we think with our mind. And therefore, um, you know, we don't want to be held accountable to that the way we were um, raised, most of us, thinking that our whole life is based around our sensory factors. We see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And we, you know, th th we have options. And what I want to talk about is becoming um, in control of what we think about so we can control what vibration that we're in which will ultimately control the results that we're getting. And that's not necessarily just a business, but this could be our relationships and, and whatever else that you, you know, that's important to you and your life. So we talked about perception being one of the mental muscles that you know, we need to blend into this thought process that we have. And it's about how we view things. You know? uh, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. That's a Wayne Dyer thing, <clears throat> excuse me. I need water already. I can tell this is gonna be, uh, I'm, I'm so happy to be back at this. But, the, but our perception is one of our mental faculties. So when we're looking at a situation and, and it's less than perfect, uh, and this morning, I'll give you the great example. I got out of bed this morning and, and the first text I got was like, oh boy, we just lost a deal immediately. And it was like, it was a big one. We worked on it for a while. And this is, this is a big, big one and never seen it coming. And so right away, of course, my immediate uh, reaction, my knee jerk reaction was like, well, you know, I start to bubble up and who's to blame and why did this happen and how can I fix it? when at the end of the day, I just had to let this go and go, you know, Dean, this is, there's something that you're not seeing here. And so if this were to go forth, you know, I guess I had to, I had to look at this a different way. I had to look at it in a way where I could walk away from this situation and still feel my vibration at a high level. Because if I was not going to do that this morning, my see, hear, smell, taste, and touch, what I was hearing was going to upset my day for the rest of the day. I might've come on this call and just been one of those. Hey guys, what's up? Eh, I've had a bad day. I don't really want to share my, my, my information today. And so, you know, guess who would lose? You would lose today because I wouldn't be here, uh, you know, full of information that I believe has the ability to change your life in a positive way. So we have the ability in our conscious mind to look at the situation and change it with our perception. And we got to change that out. And that's only up to us. So that's what perception was about. And then we talked about will. 
And I, when we talked about will, it wasn't the will you know, to push on each other, but the ability to focus. And when you got an idea that you're focused on and you believe this is gonna improve the quality of your life and you know, move you towards the goals and directions that you wanna to go to support your family. We wanna be able to understand that when we're on to something, we gotta be able to focus and you know, something round and shiny and all of a sudden we're gone, whoa. And I was the guy. You know, I was going in 75 different directions until somebody said, Dean, your ability to focus is going to create and manifest some of the things that you want. But boy, you got to sit down, man. You got to take a breath. And so I talked to Joel just before we started here. We talked about why um, developing these mental muscles. So how do you develop the, the, the faculty of will? Put a dot on a wall and go sit in a chair across the living room and go stare at it. Do that for five minutes because you'll, the first thing that happens, you'll look away and you're looking at, oh, right, got to go back, got to go back, got to go back. When you do this and start understanding that, you know, you have this ability to focus on these things, you can do that then with the separate things that's going on in your life. And then, of course, we talked about imagination and Thomas Edison said imagination is more powerful than knowledge. And as kids, of course, we sat in our chairs at school and we were daydreaming and your school teacher would come down and go, bam, hey, wake up. Really, they should have said, oh my goodness, tell me about what you're thinking. You know, we need to go back to being kids and imagine what we want our life to look like. Remember, this is, an, this is, this is one of our mental faculties blended with the thoughts that we have going through our head all the time. You know, because whatever it is we choose to think about ultimately becomes a vibration. Vibration is another word for conscious awareness of how you feel. So if you want to control your feelings, when you have a thought going through your head, blend it with something good. So that imagination, what do you want your life to look like in five years? Write that down and think about that. Sleep on that one till next Monday. What do you want your life to look like? So let's not do something that you know you can already pull off. That's, that's not a goal. That's, that's easy. You know you can do that. Let's pick out something that's going to be a little bit something scary and that you don't know how to get there. Remember, you don't need to know the how. You just need to know the why. So that's why it's important that imagination is a mental faculty. And so when somebody off in, in La La Land, that's a good thing because you're out, you're dreaming, I trust, on what it is, you know, the wonderful things that you want to bring in your life, the legacy you want to leave behind, all these wonderful things that we get to think about gets created with our imagination. The computer screen that you're looking at right now is nothing more than the, it was an idea in someone's imagination that came to fruition. And it didn't happen by accident. That was by design. So we're going to help people design what it is they want. And then we talked about memory. And how do we, uh, you know, use our memory as a higher side of our, our personality to get what it is that we want? Well, memory, you got to, you know, like we think about sometimes uh, all the failures that we've had. When we have a new idea and we go, well, then we come up with all the reasons why we can't do it because of something else that happened in our background. You're looking in the rear view mirror. You can't go forward when you're looking in the rear view mirror. So we have to use our intellectual faculty of memory to think about all the successes we've had. Where did you meet your beautiful wife? You know, talk about the first deal. How did you get it? You know, all those good feelings. When we go back in our memory and you've had one, when your babies were born, when you bought your first vehicle, you know, when you passed your real estate license, how did you feel? That's a memory. Let's bring that up to the forward and put that and blend that with the thoughts of when we're going to go out and create something new in our lives that we don't know how we're going to get it. So because we surround ourselves sometimes with people at the coffee maker, that's just down to, they're there to gossip, they're there to talk about why you couldn't do something. And that's, that's the wrong sphere of influence. So uh, understand this, uh, bring up the positive things when you're looking at going moving forward. So we have these intellectual faculties and we have two left, we have intuition and reasoning. So today we're gonna to talk about intuition. And, um, you know, this, again, it's got to be developed and you got to, you got to have an understanding. We've got to acknowledge it and go, intuition is part of our intellectual faculty. It's a higher side of your mind. I can't just give you a slice of intuition. So intuition, Wayne, again, Wayne Dyer is one of my spiritual gurus. Uh, I'm not here to talk about how to, how to get all the money and stuff today, but I'm here to talk about the sides of the spirituality, which I believe that this intellectual side of us is our spiritual side, is our higher side. And so Wayne Dyer says, um, when we talk, when we pray, it's, uh, or we talk to God, that's, or when we, yeah, we call prayer talking to God, you know? Well, when God speaks back to us, that's called intuition. It's that little tiny voice that you hear inside. Now, from the research that I've done over the years, guys, I hate to throw you under the bus here, but women of all ages have such a developed intuition over, the, over guys. It's really interesting. 
but it is whatever it is, right? I guess, you know, um, uh, there's, there's got to be some unequalness here somewhere. But, but so it is proven that a woman's intuition is just uncanny. They come by it so naturally. So one of the things would be, you know, how do you explain intuition to somebody that's just learning the English language? You know, like, how would you explain that? So intuition, you guys, is a vibration. It is, it is just that. When you walk into a room and it's less than, you know, energetic, what picks up that? Like, it, that's the side of your personality that's picking that up. It's called your intuition. You can go into a restaurant for a cup of coffee or you come in there for a meal and you get a feeling. It's like, oh my, and I've done this a lot. You walk in and it doesn't feel right. You order up a cup of coffee, you don't even drink it and you leave. You pay for it and you leave. Why do you do that? That is your intuition telling you something's not right. You are not in harmony with the vibration that's going on in that space. So don't think for a second that you're kind of, you know, you're a little off on something. I mean, you're paying attention when you're feeling that. Some people say, oh, no, that's just, no, you're just being a little, you know, you're, little, you're being a little superstitious. No, no, no. And we have to develop this intuition because the point about intuition is the intuition, you guys, is, is this is where we get our answers. And I want to I want to branch off there now for a second. So, Joe, if I get too far down a rabbit hole, please bring me back because this is a big one. Right now. So we've talked about um, effective education and how do we raise our level of awareness? So I'm going to go back to one of Joe's favorite topics. And this is like a recap. But I'm going to go down this rabbit hole for a reason, because intuition is tied into this part very heavy. Daydreaming is not only daydreaming. It's training the brain to think, focus, and concentrate, says Tom DeLusa. That's why someone who is daydreaming should not be disturbed, especially children. Tom, I love you. That's beautiful. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's so important. And I was one of those kids, too, where the teacher always came down in my day. It was a ruler, and they just gave me the crack. Wake up. And I'm like, oh, damn it. Here we go again. So coming down that rabbit hole about effective education, if we're going to raise our level of awareness because we want to get from A to B. It's, at, it's it, again, this is a good recap because it's at, it's at the beginning of our year. We're only in week two, you guys. This is so important. We're not like other people. We're special. We're sales. And um, we don't learn things the same way that other people learn things. Uh, we have to have more of a hands-on kind of learning episode for us to raise our level of awareness. So I say effectively, we can raise our level of awareness to get from A to B to, um, um, to accomplish these things. We want to do it in a different manner than just going to school and reading books and all that. Plus, come on, we have lives to live. You know, and we're going to raise our level of awareness, our conscious level of awareness, um, and, and get new results by doing four things. Having a person in our life a book, an affirmation, and a place. So when it talks to the person, we're on this, we're on this call today because you know, we've been mentored by a guy by the name of Samard, Samard, Jason Samard. And so you know, there, there's, there's an example of what a coach could look like, right? Or a mentor. I mean, it doesn't even have to be anybody that you know. One of my mentors is Wayne Dyer. Never met the man. He's a spiritual mentor to me. I mean, beyond measure, the amount of value. But I mean, I've walked into his material. I've read it. I drank the juice. It works for me. I love it and I can feel it. You know, Bob Proctor was another one. Again, a big, huge mentor. So I liked him so much. I liked his vibe on, on that movie called The Secret. I read the book called The Secret. I jumped right in bed with every seminar he was putting on in the USA back in 2010. And I cruised right around the country. And I wouldn't miss one. I became a junkie for this information. And the amount that my life increased was, well, you need a microscope. It's microscopic. You need the microscope to look at where I was 10 years ago to now. So that's how important it is to have a person in your life if you're going to raise your level of awareness. We have to raise our level of awareness if we're going to uh, go somewhere that we're not already today. And so then we talk about a book. Well, what are you reading these days? And I got, I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been sharing books. Your Invisible Power, Genevieve Biran, You, you Squared by Price Pritchard, Thomas Troward, The Hidden Power. That's a new one. I just picked up. Um, and of course, Think and Grow Rich, which we're going to touch on a little later. That's, that's been my Bible for personal development. Now it's written in a lot of old terms. You know, like it's an old way of reading. I almost feel like we're reading the Bible of personal development. But really, when you dig deep, there's lots there to take out of this thing. So that's why a book is important. And finally, uh, we talk about affirmation, not finally, but affirmation is our goal cards. And we're going to talk about that after this little session about intuition. I'm going to talk about how important it is to have a goal card with you at all times so you can read what your goals are. I mean, you know, we're going to talk about this. Right. What's your goal? 
Now, so our last part of the effective education to raise our level of awareness is a place. And now this, what, this, is what, this is how it ties into intuition. Having a place to be quiet in the wee hours of the morning, when we talk about asking questions to the universe, asking questions inside, for every question, understand this, there is an answer. And every one of us inside has that answer. Now, sometimes we wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and we just jump right out of bed and we go about our day and we just go, go, go. And I'm going to say, if we're going to raise our level of awareness, we're going to need the space in our, in our thinking, in our mind, in our day, where we have to just be. We're human beings. We're not human doers all the time. We talked about that a few weeks ago. We are a human being. So sometimes we have to sit and be human being. And in order for God, our superior, you know, the superior being, God, Allah, Buddha, doesn't matter to me. I'm just talking about our universe, the universal power that's out there. In order for this universal power to come in and talk back to us, is what we talk about intuition, we have to be quiet sometimes. And being quiet sometimes is really hard for people. And being able to have that space there is the only time that God gets to drop these ideas on you. And remember those that when God talks back to us is intuition. That's that answer that comes in. We think about, oh, I just thought about the answer. Don't give yourself too much credit, you guys. It's not you that thought about the answer. That answer was always there. You just allowed some space so that answer could come out and speak to you. Sometimes it's not always the right answer. Sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta determine what it is that is, you know, that's right or wrong for you. But I wrote this down here a while ago and I found this on my boat over the weekend. I was clearing out my boat, I'm purging. And I found this and this is what I wrote. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit in shock that I wrote this. I'm like, are you kidding? I wrote this? When you slash we are constantly filling the spaces with words and simply doing things, we miss the wisdom that drops in to find us. I can't believe that. I actually wrote that. <laughs> but that's all about intuition right there. So understand that this higher power that's trying to give us the answers that we need to move forward to become a conscious competent, the higher side of our personality. Now that's an intellectual faculty is intuition, but it's only going to come at us when we allow the space. And that's that place that I talk about when we're, when we're looking at effective education to raise our level of awareness. Yeah. So your current results equal sign your level of awareness. If you're selling, like when we talk about real estate, you know, if you sold say 50 houses last year, for instance, you know, that represents the vibration that you're in and your, your awareness, you know how to sell 50 houses. The problem is you want to sell 75 this year. And that's not a problem. That's a beautiful problem. So right now, if you didn't change your level of awareness, you'd sell another 50. But because you're on this call and you're, you're, you're taking in information, and now you're going to have another tool in your belt today about intuition, you'll get to 75 houses. And if you want, you'll make it to 100, there's no doubt. So that is such an important factor to play. And when you walk into a restaurant or a clothing store or your coffee shop or whatever, and, and you're feeling something, this is, this is, I want you to start paying attention to the vibration that's going on around you. So then of course, Joe's biting at the bit there. He just, I know he's got a question there. And it's, and if I was to read Joe's mind right now, he's like, but Dean, well, help me understand how do we develop intuition? I believe that was going to be your next question. No, Joe? Absolutely. <laughs> it, it, it pretty well was. Yeah, um, I know. That one. And then I've got another one, but we'll save that one for later. Right. Because believe this people. We, we are all intuitive human beings. We didn't get created differently when it comes to our spiritual side. We all have these faculties. And every one of us, we are intuitive. We are intuitive human beings. It comes with us. Whether we discover that or not is the path of life that God has chosen for you. But today, you're, I'm throwing it at you today. So what's interesting about information like this, right? Once, you deliver, once I deliver this, it's off my plate, right? Now it's up to you whether to develop this or not. But understand, man, once, you, once, once people start giving you information like this, it's hard to turn back. It's hard to turn back. It's hard to go back to a life of being an unconscious or even an incompetent, competent, incompetent. 
it's hard to go back once you know about these things. We have this higher side of our personality and we get to blend all of the thoughts that's coming in with that so we can ensure that our vibration is good in our emotional mind. So when we move forward, because anything that's coming out of us, our vibration, when it's positive, when we're, when we're operating under a high vibe, hmm, that's where you get results, you guys. So this is the reason why we're slowing it down right here, just to make sure that, boy, these intellectual faculties should, when, when implemented properly and blended with your thoughts, this should ensure that you are always in a good vibe. Now, of course, there's going to be situations that's going to create, you know, that you're always not going to be feeling number one. But when you understand that that's starting to affect your day, you have this ability to go back inside your mind and go, you know what, I'm going to switch that up, baby. Just like this morning, losing what, so, so we lost a big commission this morning. And this was like by eight o'clock. Now that has the ability to ruin my day if I let it. Now that's the key. We can't let that. I can't let that happen today because we wouldn't be here doing this. And so if I'm going to be a good steward of this information I have, I better be, you know, a preaching what I, or practicing what I preach. And as all days are not created equal, understand that as well. But when that happened this morning, I went, damn it. But hey, if I'm going to use that example today, that's going to be a good thing. So maybe that's why that happened today. So I could be passionate about it. And when this happens to you next, and all of a sudden there's something that's going south in one of your deals, or you go home and the kids are not in the same vibration that you are <laughs> because they're behind a jail cell. No, I mean, or, you know, when things are like that, we have to be, have that ability to use our, these, these intellectual faculties. And so when it comes down to tuition, so to answer your question, Joe, how do we develop our intuition factor? So the way to develop this is again, goes back to this will, and we have to start focusing on other people to the extent that we don't care how we feel, act, look. When, when, and I mean that by when you start talking to people now, moving forward, if you want to develop your intuition, which is you know your vibration, and picking up somebody else's vibration, you can develop it by people, helping people, helping others. When 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 you're about to talk to another human being, go in really hard and heavy. We hear with our ears. We listen with our emotions or our heart. Hmm. I want us to start listening to people with our emotions. Cause when you get really zoned in any coach, Jason, you'll be able to, you know, any, any of us that's on the call today understands this sentence that when we're, when we're coaching people, it's never about us the coach. 90% of the time it's the client that's doing the talking and the coach is listening. When you can go in and listen to someone with your emotion, and your heart, and you can start to forget about what you sound like and what you look like as a person, me. So that's that ego portion of us. When we can get rid of that part and we can go in and we can start listening to people with full on 100% intention from our hearts, that's when your intuition will kick in. Now, when you're talking that, when I'm talking to Joe like this and all of a sudden I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm shooting a text over here and I'm doing this and, and I'm doing this and I'm, Oh, oh, yeah, right. And they're telling me things and I'm not listening. Well, that's not a good, um, that's not a good example of using your intuition. If I want to get to know how my intuition works, because intuition, remember, we get it through vibration, vibration, vibrate, the vibration you're in, because you walk into a room and you know the vibe that's there. That's intuition. So we got to get at it. So if you want to develop this mental muscle, when you go home tonight and you're talking to your kids, you put your phone away. And you get in, you kneel down on one knee with one of your kids and go, hey, how was your day? How was your day? And you listen to everything they got to say. And you listen like your life depended on it. That is an example of how you can develop your intuition. Now, go around your day. When, you, when intuition is all about being selfless. When you can be selfless and it's about Joe, then... I'm exercising that muscle. And you now, Joel, you said you had a second question. Uh, we can save it to the end, man. You're on a roll. Keep going. I'm, I'm loving this. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, that's. I mean, it's by design. It's you know, it's just it's that simple. So, so that kind of that kind of wraps it up, really, about the intuition thing. Uh, you know, we've talked about what it is. We talked about how important it is. Because um, I have this other section now about using our intuition when it comes to our goal setting. And I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to shift that over there. And, um, and I have a quote here. 
I was thinking about it this morning. I wasn't sure if I had it right. So I went and looked it up in my book this morning in the, um, in the uh, Think and Grow Rich book. And as we lead out with that, I'm going to talk about two things. How do we become a conscious competent? And I want to, I want to go over what that means. And so this was the, this was the quote out of Think and Grow Rich. No more effort is required to aim high in life and think abundance and prosperity than there is required to accept misery and poverty. When I read that, I read that years ago and I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna read it again. No more effort is required to aim high in life and demand prosperity and abundance than there is to settle in with accept misery and, 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 uh, and poverty. So the same amount of effort. So why wouldn't we, why would we not look at the higher side and start working it? If there's the same amount of effort, because the people who are not winning in this life, and you know, we all meet them and you know, everybody's got their purpose to be on the planet for whatever reason, but we all meet them. And they're, it's the same amount of effort. To... I think we lost you there, Dean. Here. They haven't been you know, introduced to this kind of information. Uh, you know, um, it, it's our job. It's our job to recognize that and, and, and understand that this is what we would, we would call an um, uh, incompetent, 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 incompetent. So this is a little bit of a tricky language. So what we want to strive for is to be a conscious competent. So uh, the example would be this. When I went through my first real estate career back in whenever that was, back in the 2000s, I was kicking ass and taking names and making money. It was, uh, I was killing it. And I was just doing all this stuff from my instinct. Don't get that mixed up with intuition. From my instinct. I was just meeting people and putting out my thing. And, my, and so, you know, God bless me with a personality that I could go through. I could sell homes without even knowing what the hell I was doing. You know, hey, do you trust me? Great, sign here. Good, another deal. Done, 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 done. I was rocking and rolling, making all kinds of money, kicking ass, taking names. But that didn't really mean that I was happy and, and moving forward. And I wasn't setting goals properly. And my family was suffering. So I was a very much what was called a unconscious competent. Competent meaning people would look at my life and go, oh, my God, you're so successful. Oh, that just shows their incompetence. Because success does not mean you have money. I mean, my God, the wheel of success, there's so much involved with it. And money is such a small portion, you know, when it comes to the bigger picture, right? You know, how do you feel? We, I mean, that's another topic in itself, you know, your view of success, you know. So one of my, one of my, one of my goals here by, by creating this, this um, the other side of the coin was to become a conscious competent or help you understand what it means to become a conscious competent. So you can make a cake and you don't know what's going on in it. And if it turns out great, that's good. You just, that was a stroke of luck. But imagine if you had a recipe that would be, you know, you know what to put in, you've got the same ingredients, you're going to get the same result every time. So the point being now is with this information, it kind of turns us into a conscious competent when it comes to what we want to accomplish in life. Now we got a recipe. So versus going out there and doing shit that we just don't know what's going to like, you know what they say? Oh, just throw it on the wall, man. See what sticks. Versus doing that, why not just know what works? Meaning that now we have control of how it is that we think. We can control our thoughts with all these beautiful higher side of our personality, control about how we feel because we know one thing. When we're feeling good and our vibration's high, our results are phenomenal. So you can't deny that. Now you can, you can take a lot of stuff in life and put it all over the wall, but you can't deny that. If, when, you're, when you're operating at a high vibration, things are going well and what you're putting your fingers on is turning the gold family life so i am going to suggest that we look at this in the same manner this is a recipe you guys this six intellectual faculties is a recipe so you can have and be a conscious competent so now part of that whole program being a conscious competent i have a little i want it's it's january and i just feel like i feel myself looking at my goal card and going hey this one's empty. What's my new goal, Dean? And I've been struggling with this lately. I'm like, wow. And I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat as everybody else. Now I have a recipe here. How do I want to apply everything that I know and that I can teach and, and, and talk about goals? And so that's the second part of this little, little, little episode today. As I turn my page, if we're going to become a conscious competence, let's talk about what we're going to do with our goals. 
for how we're going to create them. I mean, by now, I'm sure by the end of last year, you did some ADMing, right? Some advanced decision making, and you are en route to your goals now. But so since we're week number two, just going into this thing, why not do a little check-in right now? And let's talk about, you know, did we all call Joe and get our goal card in the mail? I don't know. I mean, we talked about this a few months ago, but if you didn't, I mean, so a goal card is simply this. It's a little, it's just a little piece of paper that reminds you of why, of your why, really. And I want to go over some of the language today on that. Joe, do you have any, as we're transitioning now from this conscious, competent, intuition side of our personality, I mean, we, we got a recipe going on here, man, and the oven's on and we're cooking. And so anything that you want to, you know, add as we're transitioning into some tips for goal cards? Yeah. So number one, if you, uh, if you have a piece of paper and a pen, if you've got something handy and you're feeling it right now, Dean, maybe you can read the back of the goal card and anybody who's there again with that pen and piece of paper, write this down. Plan out what your goal is going to be for 2021. Don't let a card in the mail hold you back. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Write it down. Dean? Right. And we're, yeah, we're going to go over that. So, because uh, there's a language. And um, so when it comes to goal cards, now this is just stuff. This, th 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 there's no magic. There's... There's not a one thing fits all here. I'm going to share with you guys work for me over these years. And I've been setting goals now for 10 years and I'll be damned if this stuff is working. Write a lie on the back of a card, read it as often as possible, become emotional with the idea and it has no choice but manifest. Why do we say, why do you call it a lie? Write a lie on the back of a card, but why? Because you don't have it yet. So we're going to say by, by January 31st, two, or by December 31st, 2021. So that's the first thing you want to do when you're, when you're preparing your goal, if it's for this year. Now, we can do this in five years away as well. But we want to narrow down. I'm just going to take, for example, this year. So by Jan, it, 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 again, because we're dealing with a lot of real estate agents here, why don't we just you know, work that angle? Because I just, I'm a real estate agent as well. I know how that works. So if it's about real estate that you're talking about, or, I mean, it could be your family as well, you know. But by December 31st, 2021, we've got to talk about like, you know, it's in the future. And now we're going to talk about it like we've, we're already in possession of the goods that we desire. We're going to speak like we already have it. So in the book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill talks about, there's a portion in there where it talks about when you're goal achieving, we have to walk around like we've already achieved it. You got to walk around. I mean, so, so when you're dressing, when I talk to my agents about dressing for success, you want to walk into a room, man, where they think, oh my God, he is the big deal. And you might not have sold the property yet. You know, walk around like you're in, you're in possession and think like you're in possession of the goods that you desire. That is the first thing we've got to talk about. We have to see this in our mind's eye. Now, when we're talking, now, I, I love talking about this now, especially now, because, again, we have that, that new side of our personality that we can work with and blend our thoughts. Now you can engage imagination as you're thinking about what it is your goal is. And again, there's no, there's no motivation in needs. Oh, well, I'm going to need a new car by the end of the year because I got to, that's not, that's, there's no motivation in something that you need. You got to want it. And it doesn't matter why you want it. I don't give a shit why you want it. It doesn't matter. This is your thing. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. So just know that it's something that you want. And it's got to be so big that it scares you and excites you in the same breath. And you don't know how to get it. Don't think about something you're going to get because then that's no longer a goal. That's just, eh, I can pull this off. Makes you look like a hero, but really it's deep inside. You could have got that anyways. Let's go after something that you don't know how to get it. Don't worry about the how. You just got to know about the why. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So by December 31st, 2021, I am so happy and grateful now that I am in, am in an easy and relaxed manner and a healthy and positive way. So when we're talking about goals, so to, now I'll stop there for a second. When we're talking about our goals, you want to have this big one. Like, I can't, I'm not going to be going around with this the whole day, pulling this out. I mean, that's just not what you do. Now, you can, but however. So you want to have everything that you're about to give up in your life, what you're going to sacrifice for this goal, and you want to know how you're going to get it. We're going to hit that now in a second. And you want to have that written out. So the goal card itself is just a reminder and a small snapshot of what's on this big ultimate goal sheet so if i was to back up just a second i'm going to pull out my book 
they can go rich. And I'm going to read to you from my personal development Bible. <laughs> the six ways to turn desire into gold is what it says. Now, fix in the mind the exact amount of money that you desire or whatever it is that you're after. Fix in your mind. So when we're thinking about this, when we're talking about our goals, what is it that you want? You, we got to fix it in our mind. We, we've got to be precise. It's not enough to say, well, I'd like to have more money. If you go outside and pick up a quarter, hey, your goal is already realized. You got more money. You're 25 cents richer. So let's get really determined about what it is you want. If it's homes you want to sell, how many do you want to sell? Fix it in your mind. You can't say, I want to sell more. I want to sell a lot. I want to sell a ton. Well, how many is a ton of homes? Fix in your mind the exact amount of money you desire. It's not sufficient to say, uh, I want plenty of money. Be definite to the amount. And then you determine exactly what you intend to give in return for this money. Because guys, guess what? Anything that you put on your card is not going to just magically float there because you thought about it. I mean, there is going to be some action that's going to be required. This is not news, I'm sure. Determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. There's nothing. There's, there's no such reality as something for nothing. Establish a definite date when you intend to possess whatever it is that you want. Create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once. Jason, hey, Jason is a master at the planning. I'm about to shoot a video this week and talk about my experience with the Sims Coaching Group back in June 2018. I just knew I needed to change and I walked in and Jason's like, well, what's the plan? What's your plan? Well, you got that from the book. Write it out, clear, concise statement of what it is that you want, what you intend to acquire, Name the time limit for his acquisition, state what you intend to give for it in return for the money, and describe clearly the plan through which you intend to accumulate what it is you want. That's this. That's the big one. This is just a mere reminder. Read your written statement aloud as often as possible. Become emotional with the idea. When I was um, 17 years old in Newfoundland, in a small town, I'm 17, I'm about to graduate from high school. My dad walks in, he goes, Dean Harvey Watkins is about to retire and he's an oil burner serviceman. Now he says, here's the deal. He says, I got it all set up. I called Harvey, I'm gonna get you an application. You are gonna be the next Harvey Watkins in our town. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> thanks dad. He goes, yep, all done. He says, we're gonna get you in school. I'm gonna, we're gonna put you through this little course called oil burners. And off he went. So my dad had my life planned out for me. And you know, I got to tell you, at the time, it sounded pretty good because I wasn't really that aware of anything going on at 17. I knew how to sell cigarettes and I knew how to chase skirt. That was the two things that was really important for me at that time. So dad had my whole life planned out. And so when I started looking at it and I look back at this thing, there was no more emotional attachment for me to that than there is me wanting now to go jump to the moon. I have no desire to go to the moon. It's, not, it's just not my deal. Like jumping out of a plane. It's not my thing. So the point is, when you read this card, if you're not becoming emotionally excited and absolutely out of your mind thinking that you could accomplish this, you're not on the right goal. Now, there's nothing wrong with having the goal of doing this and this and this and this. It might be practical. My, my father saw me retired in that little town of 400 people servicing people's oil burners. And Nothing wrong with that. That's a good goal if that's what excited me, but it didn't excite me. So this is one of the first things when we're writing this down. This can't be done in a session. This is information now for you to take some notes and start going deep. And when you're talking to God tomorrow morning with prayer and saying, dear God, what is my goal? How do I want to position myself with my goals? And then you shut up for a minute and let God speak back to you at some point. You'll know what's making sense to you and what you're feeling. And when you get excited about that, and this is why there's, listen guys, everything that I've ever done, there's a, a boat on it. <laughs> so for those of you who know me, you know I'm into boats. I'm excited by boats. I wake up every day of my life now on my boat and I, and I, I pinch myself every day. And that was, you know, that was a goal for a long time. I wanna move on a boat and I wanna live there for a year. It's happening. I put it on a card. I was emotional with the idea and it came and manifested. I mean, the universe starts lining things up you don't have to worry about the how. And that's where people get caught up with the goals. Well, there's no way possible that I can pull off 150 houses this year because I only did 30 last year. That's not possible. Ha. Well, now you say that to yourself enough. And guess what? 
It won't be possible because you won't do it. But if you look at this possibility and go, now, let's think about the other way. Let's do the imagination thing. Let's engage our imagination. Oh my goodness. Wow. What would I feel like if I sold 150 homes? Now, what would that mean for my family and my life? What would I have to do? And then, so now, now you can start getting excited by that idea. And then we go back to, well, now you're going to get a coach and you're going to start reading books. You're going to start raising your level of awareness. Next thing you know, you're selling 150 houses. It's not, it's not that simple, but you have to have a definite plan. My point is that all that for saying that is when we start looking at our card, we have to, that's, we're looking at this every day to read it, to become excited because that triggers, that emotion of feeling triggers a reaction that we were going to get our results. We're, we're going to do certain things that we normally wouldn't do. If you're so attached to that result and you want these goals so hard and fast and beautiful, you'll be willing to do what other people won't. You know, whether it be going to the gym, if you wanted to lose that pound, you, you see a person that's motivated. I'm one of those, I'll put it to you right now. I'm not the guy that's really motivated to go to the gym these days and lose the 25 pounds, but look at somebody who is and look at their structure and look what happens to them. And they're just deadly. You guys are known that five o'clock club and you're up and you're running every day. And yeah, that's great. And I, I, I love that. I admire that. And that's a goal. But again, so this is, this is you, there's action that's required here. Now, going back to how we, how we talk about our goals. So by December 31st, 2000, or yeah, 21, hard to say that, eh? 2021. Wow. You know, I am so happy and grateful. And so this is where you, now you're, you're creating your own mindset. Now that I am in an easy and relaxed manner, in a healthy and positive way. Now you say that every time, and guess what's going to happen to your subconscious? It's going to deliver the ideas to your, to your mind that's going to help you live a healthier life and relaxed life. You're going to maybe start talking a little slower. I'm working away at that. In return for this, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable by rendering the fullest possible quality and best possible quality of service in the capacity of a real estate agent, a mom, a dad, whatever, whatever that capacity is. I'll say that again. In return for this, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable. Because well, you got to give something. By rendering the fullest possible quality and best possible quantity of service in the capacity of whatever that you're going to be. Again, you can state, this is just a template. You want to write down how you want to do it, you can do that. I will help people buy. I mean, we understand this, that our goal on the planet is to be in service to other people. That is, our, that, that, that is the ultimate purpose of a person's life, is to be in service to another human being. If you haven't figured that out yet, well, I mean, this, this is the time. So understand that you're going to give and you're going to be helping people to accomplish what it is that you want. My faith is so strong that I can see it with my eyes and I can feel it with my hands. Boy, it almost seems like a little cultish now eh, when you're saying this out loud. Let it be a cult. It's your goal. Is it worth it? Yes. I can feel it with my hands. I am now awaiting transfer to me at the time of proportion of which I decide to render the service. Put it out there. And always at the end of mine, I say, dear God, make me an instrument of thy love, peace, and abundance. You know, I always say that at the end, we, we, I, th this is the gratitude portion. I mean, if we look at a lot of the people that are really um, making it in life when it comes to what they're accomplishing, what they're getting, you know, most people say, well, I'm, you know, there, there's a habit of gratitude there. So at the end, I would say, dear God, make me an instrument that I love, peace, and well-being and abundance. So then on your little card, this is more of a summary of this. So now you can pull it out and you can feel it. You're always, you know, you put this in your book or whatever, and you have a busy day. That's out of your sight, out of sight, out of mind sometimes. With this one, you want to make this card as important to you as having your cell phone with you. Now, some people, they'll take a picture. Oh yeah, it's on my phone. Ah, I'm gonna argue there's a little bit of a difference when you gotta go back and get some. You're not gonna pull it up as often as you would see it. If your goal means a lot to you, I'm gonna say, bring that card with you everywhere you go. Look, there's, there's, there's these three things, right? Where's my wallet? There's these three things, look. This is what you want. You've got to have your wallet, your phone, and your goal card. Have it with you at all times. 
read it as often as possible. If you're sitting at a set of lights, and for those people who wear a pocket, and you can feel that gold card there, just touch it and go, huh, wow, daydream for that one second, go, oh man, it's coming, it's coming. And watch your behavior change. You watch your behavior change when you get the right goal on a piece of paper. So what we've done is we've, we want to, we want to transition you for those of you who've been getting great results in your life, but you really haven't had the plan. It's just happening. We want to turn it into a conscious competency, you know, having Jason as a coach, having, you know, um, the people that surround you that are uh, keeping your vibration up, being in a high vibration. These are all the little pieces of the recipe having a goal card and having a goal. Now, whether, you know, whether you, you, you follow right through with having the card with you at all times, but I know that these are the kind of things that when they talk about it in this book called Think and Grow Rich, I mean, this has been the Bible. This is not for me. I mean, somebody else gave me this idea. Uh, this is one of the most sought after, not sought after because there's so many out there, but read books, I think, in my personal development world that I've ever heard of anybody read. And I've read it a few times now. And I always get something a little different from it. So. As we're here at the start of January and we're in a brand new year, like, you know, I encourage everybody to take this uh, a step further when you're looking at the goals. Let's put it on paper. Write a lie on a piece of paper. Read it as often as possible. Become emotional with the idea and you watch your behavior change. When your behavior changes, so does your vibration. The vibration will create the result that you're going to get whatever that means looks like. And now with your coach, of course, you know, they're going to talk to you about, you know, all this different steps and, and how you're going to do that and that mentor and who you're watching. And I'm not talking about plagiarism. I'm talking about just being able to look at a coach and go, wow, I love the, I love the results that this person's getting. Maybe I can incorporate some of those ideas in my business and my life. So um, that's, that's what I got there for, for, for goals. And I just wanted to touch base on that because it is January. And, and I find myself as well, my new card is empty and I'm looking forward to putting this together now. And dear God, make me an instrument of that. I love peace and well-being and abundance. You see, that ties up a lot of stuff. You can read this. I can read this little tiny piece of on my card and it means so much more. I mean, for me, I, this is not about giving other people to read your goal. You, you, it's just about you got to, this is just a trigger that takes you right to that spot. Bam. How do I know? You're going to know it. You're going to read this. You're going to put yourself in that vibration. And when you're having a bad day, pick this up and believe that you can accomplish it. You watch how your behavior and your vibration will change. Joe. So Dean, uh, if, if I can sort of maybe take two minutes and sort of share, share what, sure. what my process is. Um, I've done something like that as well, where uh, I don't have, I have um, a list of 300 and anybody who's, who's done a lot of like business planning with me knows <laughs> that uh, I push everybody. So you come up with the 300 things you want in life. Right. And it's not enough to say, like, I want a new car. Yeah. I want to have two houses. Like, get specific. Like, get as granular as you possibly can. If you want a motorcycle, what make, model, what color, how fast, yeah. what does it look like? What does it sound like? What are the add ons, clip ons, bolt ons? Same with a house. How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms? Where do you want it? Get specific. Get emotionally entrenched in the goals that you're talking about. But if you're going to sit there and goal plan, Goal plan, come up with 300 things because your brain's naturally going to shut down at, at thing number 80. At thing number 80, you tank out, you're done. But yeah. start thinking about your legacy. Start thinking about the good that you want to do in commu the community. Think about when you die, what do you want your grandchildren to have? Push mm -hmm. yourself to expand beyond you onto everybody else. 300 things. Now, it took me probably about four and a half hours. But here's the thing. I read that every single day. I look at that list. And every year, I will tell you, I cross off 10%. Every single year. My top five are written in my wallet, right in that billfold. It's beat up. It is ripped up. It is torn. Uh, but it's in there. So when I go into that wallet, I see the top five. When I go on my phone, the first thing I see is I see the other 295 and I can visually see what I've ticked off, but start again, have that emotional connection with your goal. It's again, like you said, it's not enough to say, well, I'm going to do more. What does more look like? What does it look, feel, taste, touch, sound like? Hey, Dean. Yeah. yeah. That is like having a vision board, right? Having these vision boards that people, I love it. I mean, when I, when somebody first told me the idea of a vision board, I thought they were insane. Like what? 
my goodness, does it work? I mean, and when you look at, when you start talking to the people that are in the vibration that we're after, hmm, the answer is there. These people will say the same thing over and over and over. And I hear it all the time with the people that are saying, how did I get, well, I started with a vision board. And I, so that's a great way to start. I love it. And you know, again, if this exercise is, has taught me anything, it's an exercise of patience, yeah. getting to know myself, celebrating my affirmations, celebrating, yeah. you know, what, what I do a little bit different, looking at what my values are. Yeah. Um, I'm also a huge believer in daily routine and ritual. To me, I think humans are, are, are creatures of habit, mm -hmm. getting yourself in a successful routine. Like again, getting up early in the morning, getting your exercise in, incorporating advanced decision-making, um, yep. but do something in the morning that's going to be impactful, not only to you, but it's going to have an impact to everybody in your circle. Like for me, uh, my wife bought me this amazing little calendar of quotes. Oh, yes. Every day I see a new quote that gets me fired up. And I kind of had this personal challenge of how am I going to incorporate this quote into my day? Right. What does it look like for me to pass that on? Yes. Yeah. So I wake up to that. Plus I have this bizarre ritual in the morning where every day I pull out a baseball card as odd as it sounds. And that signifies the start of my day, hearing it, learning about somebody else's struggles and success. And it sits on my desk, just a baseball card. I bet I've got like 10,000 of them. And at the end of the day, I read it again and I put it back. And that signifies the closure of my day. So I'm a very ritualistic person and I'm, and I'm very well organized, self-motivated, but at the same time, I also look beyond myself when I'm, when I'm looking at goal planning too. So um, yeah. a couple of things that I do. Yeah. And understand that every seed has a gestation period. You Just because it. we say it doesn't mean it doesn't, you know, it's not all about, you know, what we're trying as well. Sometimes, Hey, don't give up on your goal. If it's not the right timing. So I mean, Dean, you might, it might be just a little bit more. So Dean, can I, can I read you the quote for today? Yeah. The key to everything is patience. You get the chicken by hatching the egg, not smashing it. <laughs> right to what you were just talking about, right? Smash Having my egg, baby. Yeah, right. The patience I love it. and persistence. Um, so as always, Dean, I, I am truly blessed to have you in my sphere. Oh. I absolutely love the value that you bring. Uh, yeah. you, to me, when I look at a, a, a person, um, you know, again, like a, like a mentor, a place, a book, and an affirmation, man. Uh, you uh, are, are one of those people I look at as, as a mentor. So, I mean, as always, man, thank you so yep. much. Noah. My pleasure. Yeah, we're just so grateful for the value that you that you bring. So we have a couple minutes left. If anybody has any questions that they want to put into sure. for us, uh, yes. any goals that they want to share, we are here to uh, we're here to support. So uh, yeah, right on. And if not, then we will see everybody soon. And then again, we will be uh, this will be available on the replay through our, sure. uh, our Abby site as well. And then, we and then next week we talk about reasoning. Yeah, well, our final episode, man. I feel yeah. like this is like this is kind of that's kind of like the season ending of The Sopranos or something. Oh, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do afterwards. <laughs> yeah, right. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, well, you're so welcome, and, and it's my pleasure. I mean, this is my purpose on the planet is to be doing this very thing, and this is what really um, I I know it just um, it's almost selfish because it, it, this is what feeds me as well, and this is the part that feeds my soul, and I know this is part of my purpose is to share these things. And so I'm just so, I'm so grateful that I'm here. Yeah. Definitely. And so everybody have a great week. And again, you can always reach out to us. Um, we have a stack of these. <laughs> Joel's gonna say, Dean, uh, really? We have a stack of these. Can I, Joel can't wait to put them in the mail because he wants to do a personal yeah. touch with everybody. And I will too. And, and as I mentioned, we will be, anybody who <laughs> wants one, we'll be sending those out after the final session. For uh, sure. We're gonna be doing a, a mass, ma mass mail. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Uh, but hey, it also you're so me, welcome. It gives me an excuse for you and I to hang out when I uh, when yeah. I grab a stack of them. Yeah, so for sure. it's uh, yeah, definitely a blessing. So okay. everybody have an amazing Monday. Yeah, Remember for sure. After it, and we'll uh, hopefully yeah. see you guys on the next uh, the next episode. Final episode. Okay. All right, yeah, Dean. Cheers. All right.